All right, let's take a look at free response number four, 2023 AP Physics 1 exam. The, the, at the time of this video, the solutions aren't released yet, so this is my best guess at solutions. I will put any corrections in a pinned comment below. So number four, block of unknown mass is attached to a long, lightweight string that has wrapped several turns around a pulley mounted on a horizontal axis through its center shown. The pulley is a uniform solid disk of mass M. Radius R, the rotational inertia is given by this. The pulley can rotate about its center with negligible friction. The string does not slip in the pulley as a block falls. When the block is released from rest, okay, so the velocity is zero, oh, and the block travels toward the ground, the magnitude of the tension is FT. Determine the expression for the magnitude of the angular acceleration alpha D of the disk, of the disk as the block travels downward, expression. So I want a free body diagram of this disk because if I want the angular acceleration, that is a positional free body diagram. I want to use net torque equals I alpha, right? Because they're asking the angular acceleration and they're asking of the disk. So I want a free body diagram of the disk, okay? So what's happening to the disk? We have gravity. We have an axis that's holding it, okay? And then we have a tension force pulling right up there, right? So that's our free body diagram, but we've identified the forces. Now, we have to identify where the axis of rotation is. That's the next step. Axis of rotation is right around the center of the pulley. That makes sense. So then if I use the net torque, the axis and the MG don't exert a torque on this thing because their R is zero. It's located at the axis of rotation. There is one torque, however, R times T. So when I do is net torque equals I alpha, this is going to be R times T is equal to I, the rotational inertia, which is one half MR squared times alpha. One of these R's will cancel. So you multiply by two T. Oh, actually, I'm supposed to say FT. That is, I'm so used to writing T, but it's technically they gave us FT here. So it's 2 times FT divided by M is equal to alpha. Okay. And, oh, there's an R on the bottom. What am I doing here? There's an R. Let me see. Times 2. I'm making a lot of algebra mistakes on these FRQs lately. So I'm going to double check. 2 divided by M divided by R. That's alpha. Okay. Uh, scenarios one and two show different pulleys. In scenario one, the pulleys pull with the same solid disc reference in part A. In scenario two, the pulleys pull by a hoop that has the same mass and radius R on the disc. Each pulley is a lightweight string wrapped around it several turns, mounted on a horizontal axle as shown. Each pulley is free to rotate. Blah, blah, blah. The, in both scenarios, the pulleys begin at rest. Okay? The both are pulled with the same constant force FA for the same time interval, causing the pulley to rotate without the string slipping. After a time interval delta T, the change in angular momentum of the disc is equal to the change in angular momentum of the hoop. Um, okay, but the change in rotational kinetic energy of the disc is greater than that of the hoop. Consider scenario one and two at the end of the time interval delta T in a clear coherent paragraph length response that may also contain equations drawings to explain why the change in angular momentum is the same but the change in rotational kinetic energy is greater for the disc. Okay, let's. there's two points we have to address. We have to address the angular momentum, and then we have to address the energy. There's a couple of ways you can address this. Um, so if we're gonna talk about the angular momentum, you're always thinking about torque over time is the change in angular momentum, right? That's the main course concept about angular momentum is that if I apply a torque over time, they're gonna have a change in angular momentum. So how are we going to have this, the change in angular momentum is related to the torque? Well, both are exerting the same force at the same distance, so thus they have the same torque acting on them. They are also acting on the same time interval, so this quantity is the same. That is why the angular momentum is the same. So we need to spell all of that out. Both objects have the same force acting at the same distance. radius resulting in the same torque so like you need to spell that out resulting in the same torque you should you should spell that out you shouldn't just say the torque is the same you should spell that out, resulting in the same torque okay the change in angular momentum is equal to torque times the time so they have the same torque and time results in the same change in angular momentum. So we've addressed the first part of the question. Change, oops. In angular momentum, okay. Now, we wanna talk about energy. Now, there's a couple of things you can think about at this point here, okay. The, the, the change in rotational kinetic energy is greater for the disk. 
Now, um, you can probably easiest think about it is just think about it from the I omega. So we know the rotational kinetic energy is equal to one half I omega squared, right? Now, probably the easiest way to describe like the I omega is kind of the same, um, or or I, I guess if, if if they have the same angular momentum, you have to make an argument about. So, if if they both have the same angular momentum, then you have to make an argument as like, well, even the one has a bigger I. So we we have to talk about how this guy is a larger rotational inertia in some sense because the mass is further away from the, the axis of rotation, because the same mass, but it's distributed further away from the axis. So we can say larger rotational inertia is gonna mean that even though they have the same angular momentum, this guy is not going to be spinning at fast because their I omega should be the same. But because this guy has a larger I, he has a smaller omega, okay? By that argument, okay? So so like, and, and, then, and then you can use this argument about the kinetic energy. This is, then you could say like, well, this is one half I omega, times omega, which is one half times the angular momentum times omega. And so basically they have the same angular momentum, right? But this guy's moving faster. So the one that's moving faster is gonna have more kinetic energy. So that's kind of like the next part we would say. We would say, well, both have the same, both have the same I omega. However, the hoop has a greater so just ignore that has a greater has a greater i because the mass is further away is further from the axis of rotation thus the hoop has a smaller omega okay now the other part is just the kinetic energy part, and that's why I use this argument. I say the rotational kinetic energy, you can define this, it's one half I omega squared, which is equal to one half I omega times omega, which is really one half L times omega. So they have the same L, angular momentum, but omega one is greater than omega two, which implies that um, you know the, 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 the solid disk has more kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, okay? And that would address the second point, the change in rotational kinetic energy there. Okay. Um, all right. That's the, that was the fourth question.